This video is going to look at creating a time code show to an audio track. And we're going to use Reaper to create some markers and then program to those markers. We're also going to connect Winamp to AvaLights as a time code source or an audio playback and time code generator. So first of all, we've got a show here with a couple of cues in there and I want to create a new timeline. So to start recording to a new timeline, very simple. We just go up to record here and from the options on the right, we choose create timeline. And I'm gonna put the very end of my first page here, right over in the corner here, and there it is. Brand new timeline. All right. Now in Reaper, we're gonna create our markers. So first of all, I need to set a few things up. We need to change the time format so that the timings will match up how we want the markers to live in Avo. And so just right clicking the top section here, right now it's in measures and beats, and that's the Reaper default. We wanna to go to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So once I've switched that, you can see the time changes up here. Um, and you can open another window, view region markers. And it'll bring up this region marker tab here. And now I'm going to drag in my audio file. And just M to add markers in our Reaper. So I'm just going to go through, play a bit. So I know I want a marker just here. Hit M, I've added a new marker. And then in my region market tab, I can give it a name, call that robot. So I'm gonna go through now, I'm gonna put in a whole lot of markers. I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I've added a few markers in, export them for Avo lights to find region markers. If I right click in the top there, I have an export region markers option. So I'll click that and I'll bring up a menu. I need to save this somewhere that Avo lights can find it. That can either be in the show folder, but I find it's easiest to save it to a USB for Avo lights to see it from the show USB. So audio markers, I'll just leave that default name there. I'll save that. I can close out of Reaper. And back in Avalites in the timeline view, we'll have an option to import these markers. So under the little options menu here, and then tools, import markers. And then over in the menu over here, it'll show some options. So I'll put my removable show USB as the second option. And right there, there's my audio markers file. So once I click that, and confirm it's brought in all those markers with those names as well into the timeline. So right now my timeline is connected just to an internal time code generator. So this will play back whenever I control it from the console. But I want to control this from an external time code source. In particular, I want to use Winamp so I can play back the audio file and have the time code come into the console. And Avalites connects directly with Winamp for this. Now I want to get the time code from Winamp into control my timeline. So in the time code menu here, Right now, time code one is my internal time code. I'll leave that as is, so I don't want to mess with that one. I'll create a new one. So you can have up to four time code sources set up in Avalite. And this is handy for separating them out. Uh, so right now, time code two, I'm going to choose my source as Winamp time code. And now I need to connect it to this timeline. So I need to open up the options for this timeline. If I click my options menu here and select that timeline, down the bottom in time code here, I can change my source from time code one to time code two. Now if I close out of this, uh, it's very handy having Winamp available the whole time. And although you don't need to click it necessarily, you need to change stuff, it is nice to have it visible here to see what's going on. And when running Avalites on the computer with the simulator, there is a nice bit of dead space here that's quite useful. So in Winamp, you can actually set it to always be on top. So options always on top or control A means no matter, even if you're clicking in Avalites, Winamp can kind of stay there and be visible the whole time. Now that I have Winamp selected as the time code source, I can link it. So I'll use this link icon down the bottom here to make sure I've got the link to Winamp. And I'll hit play. And as you can see, I've got control over Winamp from Avalites. So these playbacks will work to control my Winamp start and stop and rewind. Uh, you'll notice TC disabled, time code disabled, even though we're linked. Uh, so we still need to actually enable that as a time code source. So back in the time code menu, Time code two, timer disabled, click over timer enabled, and now you'll see that TC disconnected is gone. This link is great because it can actually turn off time codes. So you've got an external time code source and you don't want to be running really quick to unlink the timeline from it there. So I can have that time code playing. Link it up when I need it. If I unlink, it will keep playing even if I've stopped. So it's quite good for a free run as well if I want it to keep playing out pick up the trigger at the start and then let the play out run in 
free runtime. Okay, now they've got Winamp connected, you'll notice uh, my timing's starting at one hour, and that's coming because Winamp sets up each track as a separate hour. This is very good to have a whole lot of songs listed, um, but unfortunately it doesn't start at zero, so we need to offset our time to get it back to the right value. So we need to offset this back one hour. To do that, just hit the times button here and then select the timeline. And we want to change the offset. So we want to set the offset amount to one hour. So the nudge amount to one hour. And then just subtract by one hour. As you see, it'll show the little offset down the bottom here. And we're now at zero. So that our mark is now back where they lined up. We were our markers are one hour behind. So we're, now we're back at zero, zero, the markers are right there and we should hear that robot sound right on that robot marker if we hit play. All right, so now I've got Winamp hooked up, it's time to start recording in some time code triggers. I'm gonna start recording some triggers to this time code source. So I've got this first cue here I wanna use for that robot mechanical sound. I want it to build in with the fader. So first I'm going to set this up. Uh, I want it to fade to fader. So I'm going to set it to mode two on the fader, fade to fader. And under the cue options, I'm going to set my fixture overlap to zero. So they're not overlapping at all. And now if I look at my fader, if I bring this fader up slowly, it actually builds up with the fader. So I can actually trigger this off the timeline. So to start recording, so record mode, select the track I want to record into, Hit play. So let's stop right there. So you can see it recorded that fader move and it's actually simplified it into just a couple of points here as triggers on this track. So if I want to edit those, I can click on those points or drag and select to move them around. So I liked where it started, but I wanted to fade all the way up and then drop right on this marker here. So I'll just drop my playhead there so I can see it. I'll drag around that marker and I can use these wheels now to move it to the correct time. So I'll pull that right to that release. And I want it to fade all the way up and then drop. So I didn't have a long enough fade, but I can change that here as well. So this trigger just here, I'll set drag the fade time and you can see that slope just moving along until I'm happy with it. So I'll right before it finishes. Now I can play that back. So I'll rewind, hit play. So that's my first track. I can build as many tracks as I want. You see each playback will have its own row in your track. So if I use the flash button as well, that would be recorded. So you can see everything that's assigned to that playback is in the same track row here. Now I don't want to save those, so I'll cancel that record. All right, so I want to record some more to this. So I want to do a long build. So I've got this spikies that kind of move in on the fader as well. And I want them to fade up after that drop, but all the way up until this drop here. And that's quite a long time. And I can record that and then adjust it afterwards. So on this spiky up cue here, I'm going to start record mode again. Still recording the same track. I'll hit play. I want to start building up now. So it's quite jerky as I'm trying to record. You can see all the steps happening in there. So I'm going to stop that record now. See it's simplified a little bit, but there's still some jerkiness in there. And I can delete the ones I don't need. So I just want a long fade up into this point. So delete, I'm going to just delete these three that I don't need. I'll confirm that. And I'll adjust this one. So I needed to fade from zero to 100 on that fader. So I'll just bring up the level to full. And I'll just tweak all the adjustments. So I want to start right with that release. So right about there. And the level I want to fade over all this time up until this point just here. Drop my playhead about there. I'll select that again. Make sure I've got that trigger selected. And I'll just wind up the fade time all the way till about there. Now I can rewind and play that back. So 
So I've got these two bell cues. I'm happy with that fade up, but I want a quick bump on those bell cues. I had like a quick flash to a warm white there that I wanted to happen. Now I can have that happen in the same timeline. So I'll rewind again. I'm going to record mode. I just want to flash these bumps. So I'll start recording, same track, hit play. <laughs> So you can see there's that a new track row for the spiky bumps. And this time the trigger is a flash button on and off trigger. So you can see the two triggers there if I zoom in. But I was definitely off the mark on this second one here. So I'll move my playhead in and I'll just adjust the timing on this one. So I want to flash right on that bump and then release. I can move the release back a little bit so they're on for a little bit longer. See there's two triggers in there and on and off or press and release for that button. So I can play back just from this point. So if I click here, there's a choose. So I can use the playback to fast forward and jump between on the Winamp control. So if I hit play, I can keep replaying a section type by the time just right. Alright, so similar to that bump, on this drop hill, I've got another flash I want it to happen just on this drop hill here. So I'm going to record another flash button in there. Uh, same thing, rather than going from the very start, I'll record this track, choose where I want to start playing from, and hit play. No! Stop recording. Now it's way too late on that, but I can adjust those very easily. So again, select the first one where I want to start. I'll wind the time right to where I want it. I'll drop in my playhead so I can line it up nicely. Select that first flash trigger. Turn on right there, and I want it to stay on for a little bit and then turn off. So just before that next marker, I'll have it turn off. So hold off for a little bit. And I can test that very easily. So again, just hit play from where I want to play. So that was a little too long. I'll just wind it back a little bit. Play it again. No! So I'm pretty happy where things are at the moment. I want to make sure I don't mess any of this up by accidentally selecting and moving things around. So I can actually lock off this track now. So I hit this padlock. I now can't move any of these items around. This is all locked in. I can collapse this up. I can start a new track. So this is quite good if you want to try a few different things out. You can start a new track, click new down here, uh, blank track, this is track two. And now when I record, I'll have the option of choosing this one. It won't let me choose the one that's locked off, and so I want to record in track two. So I'm not going to record anything just yet. All right, so in track two, I want to add a trigger for this playback here, this kind of just line chase fade thing I've got happening. I can just add it directly in. So I want to add a new trigger for an existing playback. He'll jump here, select the handles of the playbacks to add. So I want to add this one. Both are flashing red to see they're selected. I can type in the time if I know it, or I can just click directly on the track where I want it to happen. So right about here, you can see it's added in my first trigger. It's also added in a final trigger. I don't know when I want this to turn off yet. So I'm going to move this trigger all the way out. I click down the bottom here to get back to my view. So this little scroll timeline view down here, I can jump around very easily. And I want this to fade in over a few seconds, maybe two or three seconds. Now I'll move it forwards slightly. And I can trigger that playback now and see how it's gonna look. So if I hit play, jump ahead of time. All right, so I think I'm happy with that, but I wanna try something else as well. So I'll lock that one off mute it for now. So now it won't actually play back. So if I trigger this, no! it's not playing back that cue anymore. So I can try something here different. I'm going to try another style. Create a new blank track. 
I'll even name this one so I know. So I'll call this, uh, select the track, and I'll call this test. I've got this other chaser, which is actually a flash and go. So I've set this up with my playback handles. So I've created a key profile called flash and go. I've set my flash button to, my gray flash button to flash and go. And what that's doing is actually stepping through each cue every time I hit the flash button to get that different look. So I'm gonna try this now instead for that next part, to try and get on every beat, have a different set of squares flash up. So I'll record that in, same as before. Hit. Start my record mode, now recording on this test track, hit play and I'll jump ahead. It's added in all these flash and go triggers in the timeline for me here. And there's a lot of them, so that'd take a long time to record individual time code steps. I can reuse the programming over and over. So rather than have to have all those in one cue list, I can just cycle through. So this chase only has four steps in it. So I can keep reusing those four different cues and create my own chase from there. I'll play that out and see. No! I like that, I don't think it quite fits, so I can just delete that completely out of my timeline now. So I'll go this whole test track or just that row. So hit delete. I can select the row and it'll delete all of that or the, or I can delete that whole track. So I'll just get rid of that whole track for now. No, I don't want it. I'm happy with this one. So I'll turn track two back on, hit play. <laughs> So I've decided I'm pretty happy with um, my option from track two, and I want to move it into track one. I want to keep these all kind of nice and organized. So I'll unlock both of those for now. And so this Q6 fade, I want to move into track one. And very similar, I can either copy it to keep both or just move. So I'll select move, grab that row and select track one. And there we go, it's now moved straight into track one and track two is now empty. So I'll lock off track one again. So I want to keep adding some more of these strobe cues on these extra markers. I see I'm missing a marker right here. So I'm going to add that in real quick. So I want to happen right there. So very simple, I just click add new marker. It's going to ask me which track I'm going to select this one, but I should just put it on the whole timeline. So I'll click right there. There's my new marker. If I open up my table view first, actually, so I can see that it's in there. So all my tracks, if I just select by markers and I can select my markers in here so I can see there it is at 40 seconds. I'll give that a name of strobe off as well. So str. And now I have all my strobe markers. So I'm gonna record these strobe bumps as well for all of those steps. So I'm gonna record, record the first one quickly. And I'm going to copy them all the way across right and I have to play the whole track out. I know exactly where they need to happen. So again, into record mode, select the track I want to record into. So track two. I'll start playing back here. So I can see that I've wanted to start and then on that offbeat release. So if I zoom in a little, so control and I can wind the wheel and drag these handles to change my view area. I just want to line these up with the markers. So I'll use my playhead to see where that marker comes in and then just roll the wheel. Same for my out trigger, make sure I've just selected that. Move that to where I need it. Now I'll select, I want to copy these for each step. So I copy, I'll select the markers, and I want them to copy just here. So if I click on my timeline there, again, copy again, same markers, just there. Across. And this timing should be the same, so I shouldn't even be able to copy all three at once. So I copy, select mode, all three markers. I'll wind down and I want it to happen. So if I 
one that I brought on this one, because the track's in time, it should keep those markers in time. I'll just copy this last one over. Now if I zoom back out, I should have all those steps lined up with those markers. And that should be in time with the track. So I'll play that back now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. If you know that the beats are all the same, you should be able to spread them out and copy them out as much as needed. So that's useful for a lot of repetitive beat stuff. Once again, I've now recorded this track. I'm happy with what I've done. So I'll take it out and I'll record it back, move it back into the main track. Uh, the interesting thing this time is I've actually already used this strobe spiky already. So there already is a Q16 strobe spiky uh, playback in there. But that's okay, so I'll merge it back in. So if I copy or move from track two into track one, make sure I've unlocked it. So track one. And now if we scroll down, you'll see that my first strobe is in there and it's now merged with that whole track row. If I play back. No! There's my first strobe. And now the rest of my strobes are in that same design. Again, I can lock track one. I'm happy with where it's at. I'll close that up. Okay, so uh, my spikies are kind of doing nothing for a long time. So I want to add something else in there. And I haven't actually recorded any cues for that. So I'm going to create a new one. Uh, I'm just going to tie it up quickly. I'm going to name this first track a master. So I'll unlock it so I can actually name it. And I'll name this second one test as well as my test track. Okay, now I want to make these spikies move a bit. And I'm going to create a new playback for that. I don't have to go through the process of saving a whole new one. I can just add it directly in. So you have this option to add new playback. And it's going to ask me where. I want it to happen just after that drops on this marker just here. So I'll click that in track two, my test track. You can see it's added it in. And I'll quickly just move my timings out. So I know this wants to happen till the end of the track. And I'll give it a bit of a fade in as well. Um, but right now, see this is called Q19. There's nothing actually in there yet. I'll call this, give it a name so it's easy to find. So set legend, uh, spiky move. All right, I'm just going to record this in. So I'll just grab my spikies and give them a quick move effect. It's a little simple tilt sign. Back in my time, I can actually record this or merge it straight on. So I'll go record and I'll select that spiky move, I click merge or replace. It's now recorded in, so I'll clear that out. I'll play this back and jump ahead. No! As you can see, it didn't fade in, so I'll change my fade options as well. So my Fader to mode two again, fade to fader, and that should fade in the movement over. A, I'll move that up to about three seconds as well, so it fades up to that next strobe. Play again, jump ahead. No! And now we've faded in. Uh, so, where is this actually saved? So, this Q19 isn't on a playback, but if I open up my show library, You can see under timelines, uh, playbacks, there's now a timeline option. And this one here, number 19, spiky move. So you can see it here, if I need to move, I can actually move that down onto my playback. So I need it down there as well. So it might be easier to edit. So if I move you down here. All right, so I'm happy with it again. So I'm gonna move that in to my master again. So I'll move. You into the master. I'll lock off the master track that I'm using. I'm going to record something else in. So another bringing stuff into the timeline is to move it in. So I've got some stuff on another page, and 
it's quite difficult to jump between pages, but I can just simply move it. So I've got this kind of fade in and out, um, and I want to bring that into the timeline as well. So if I click move, I can move this whole playback onto the timeline there. So it actually asked me where I want to put it. I want this to happen towards the start on that flash and release. So I'll just put a marker in there and go back to my main page now. Make sure it's released. And I want it to flash on and then fade out quite quickly. So I'll put a fade on that out time and I'll move that time right, right up to the flash. And now if I play that, I'll make that fade cue trigger a bit longer. It's quite hard to get in, so I'll zoom right in on that to open it up. Make sure I'm just selecting the one trigger there. So I'll drag and select just the end trigger and I'll fade that out over a bit longer. Be about four seconds. And this is good. So if you've got a whole lot of stuff, rather than trying to control it once, you move stuff from different pages in and it's a lot easier than trying to record it and jump between pages. Uh, so once it's in there, I'll try that again. If I'm happy, I'll save it in. So yeah, just play it back. All right, so I'm happy with that. Once again, I'll unlock my master, I'll merge it with the track. So move, move this into my master track. That's done, lock it off again. You can see all my points are in there. So I've got this final part that I wanna add in, just this kind of builds in and out on a fader. So I'm gonna record them in as the track keeps playing on. So I'm gonna jump ahead and just record those in. I've stopped, but I haven't stopped recording just yet. And I don't want to actually save this in because I've realized I need to turn off the previous fade in first, the previous cue that's running those squares. So rather than deleting this, Whilst I'm still in record mode, I can just cancel live recording here. So I'll hit cancel and everything I just did has not been saved. And so I'll go back into my main queue here. And it's this track, this Q6 chase that I need to fade out. So I want it to turn off at a certain point. So what I'll do is I'll move this Q6 back out of this queue list into my test again. So move six back into test, just so I know I'm not messing up anything in my finalized or completed version. And so I want this to fade out, I'll zoom in when these strobes start. So around here. Now, rather than dragging back in that old finishing level, I can just add a new one in. So I'll click and add new set level. And I'll choose the playback I want to affect. So Q6 chase. And then I need to choose where I want it to happen. So about when that strobe starts or just just towards the end, actually when that one finishes off, so I'll click in there, right at that time, it's added in my set level trigger. Uh, so the level is going to be zero and I'll fade it out over the next two strobes, I guess, and then we'll bring in a new one. So once again, I'll keep recording in the same track and I've got that other playback on layer page two that I want to use. And I'll record these together to see how they look. So I'll start recording again in my test track. Play. No! stopped playback but I've still in record mode and you can see I've got this auto simplify option here. If I turn that off, so you can see these are all very steppy. It's got 
a lot of trigger points in there. And if I stop recording now, it's saved in all those points. So, and that can look very steppy after a while. And it's also very hard to edit so many points all at once. So I go to my tools menu in the timeline, to so tools, and then simplify select the triggers. See, it's now just put them into smooth fade overs. So I can do that for all of them. So I'll move out the Q6, I'm happy with that. Just to make sure I'm not accidentally adjusting anything I don't need to. And I want to simplify all of these tools. Simplify selected triggers. What I can also do, I don't need this one, it's just miss just one point in the middle there. I can delete that one. Click delete. I'll just drag a marquee over that single trigger. Confirm it's gone. I actually want to join all these together, so they're constantly going up and down. So if I select all of these, and in that tools menu again, this time, uh, instead of simple, I want to smooth. So smooth selected triggers, and see it's just done single points for fade in and out. Let's have a look at this one. Once again, I've done this, but I'm not too happy with it. I'll save it for now, just in case I want to come back to it. So I'll lock that off, close it, turn it off, and I'll start a new track. So once again, a blank track. I'm going to use these, I've got these vertical and horizontal lines. I just want to kind of flash in on there as well manually. Right now, they've got a fade out of five, but they're not fading out. So I'm going to set the playback handle uh, to timed flash. So this nightclub mode here, do the same for the other. So now I flash on and then fade out over half a second. And I'll record these into the track as well instead of that. Start recording again in track three. Hit play. And I'll jump ahead. So I've got my lines recorded in there. I changed my mind at the start and I wanted to actually have them alternating. So you can see it, my first flash timed triggers are in here. I actually want to have them alternate. So right about where this one happens, I want to copy these two. So you can see a FT for flash timed. I'm just going to copy these triggers right where this one was. So right about there. And now I can delete the one in the track above. Confirm that. If I play that back, jump to it. So once again, I think I prefer that over the other version I was testing. I'll make my arm um, a bit bigger now so I can see it all. So I need to move. Seven. Eight. Lock it off. And I can delete this one now. So I'll delete my test. Confirm that. I'll delete track three. Confirm that. So now I'm pretty happy with this whole cue list timeline I've got going on here. So there's a few ways of using the timeline in Ableites and bringing in cues, triggers, and markers. 
and connecting it to WinApp. So I'm just gonna let this play out now. Have a look. If you've got any questions, let me know or thoughts. Enjoy.